I'm Murdy, but an early Murdy. Welcome to the first video of the series about creating a new programming language. I'm the creator of Chaos Programming Language and I'm able to channel my wisdom to you and open up your chakras. In this video series, I will hopefully guide you through the journey of designing and implementing a new programming language from scratch. So let's jump into it. First of all, we need to choose some programming paradigms to define our new language. Some of the most common programming paradigms are imperative, declarative, procedural, object-oriented, functional, pure functional, logic, structured, function level, value level, template, reflective, concurrent, and relativistic. The paradigms I chose are declarative, functional, object-oriented, value-level, reflective, and relativistic. It will be a general-purpose language, of course, and not a domain-specific one. It will be a high-level language since we will automate things like memory management, linking, and provide architectural agnosticism. It will be closer to the natural language than to machine language, which is ones and zeros, so it falls into high-level category. In terms of the implementation of the languages itself, it can be both interpreted or compiled. It does not affect the language's definition. We'll hopefully cover the both cases. So the language will be high level, interpreted, declarative, since we want to avoid any global state, functional, because of the same reason, object oriented, but in a different way, value level, since there will be variables, reflective, because it will be good to have the ability to access or modify some meta language stuff, relativistic, since we want parallelism, but in a way that race conditions would never happen. But what will be the name of this language? Hmm, let's name it in a very creative way and call it the language X. Now stop the video and dream about this language. Force your imagination to come up with unique keywords, colorful loops, or some fantastic functions. After you chose the paradigms or invented the new ones and dreamed about the syntactic sugars of your language, it is time to create a roadmap. A language has to have some grammar rules and a text needs to be written in a language, otherwise it will be gibberish. Where do you store text in your operating system? In some files, right? So a program should start from a file. It can also be standard input, which is also a file. Then, you need to split that text into indivisible pieces, tokens. We call this process tokenization. By the way, tokenization method is also used in NLP with the same exact purpose. Then we call the program that does tokenization, tokenizer, aka scanner, aka lexer. In the literature, it is almost always called lexer. We will use flex lexer generator for this part. The lexer has to send those tokens into something to process it. That something is the parser. Parser reads a token stream that comes from the lexer and according to the grammar rules that you have defined, it extracts the meaning, the described functionality and the data from that text file. We will use Bison Parser Generator for this part. The road from the parser to an actual program is challenging. You cannot just parse and execute the program because it would require reparsing the same code over and over again to achieve loops or functions. So you need to build something called abstract syntax tree out of the parser. We are going to build the AST by implementing a tree-like data structure using cstruct. After having the AST, the road splits into two paths. One is implementing an interpreter and the other one is implementing a compiler. There is a hidden path in between those two paths which is called just-in-time compiler but it will be out of scope for this video series. An interpreter is a set of instructions that straightforward traverses the AST and executes those instructions. Interpreters cannot do major optimizations on the execution of the sprite code 
but they can achieve something that a compiler cannot, the evolve function. So that, if your X language will be an interpreted language, you can give some X language code as input to a program written in X language in a way that this program can lex, parse, build AST and then interpret the code given as a string in this language, which is a luxury that compiled languages don't have. It's also crucial to achieve some magic calls and reflection. The compiler is in its essence is actually a transpiler that generates an intermediate form or a series of intermediate forms out of your code and eventually generates the machine language instructions so that the instructions can be interpreted by the CPUs itself. Compilers can achieve major optimizations but the language will have less magic. The compiler we will write in this video series will be an ahead of time compiler. As you can see, no matter if it is a compiled or an interpreted language implementation, it needs to be interpreted by the CPUs itself at the end of the day. I would like to sum up the list of tools and libraries that we are going to use while implementing the X language in this video series. C language Flex Lexer Generator, Bison Parser Generator, GCC, C Lang, GNU Debugger, GNU Readline, GNU Make. That's it for today. Hope to see you in the next videos. Don't forget to subscribe, like or dislike, and maybe ring the bell if you will. Bye bye.